Coach B's Driving School, along with Randy's Auto Body, your sponsors for the timeout show for a beautiful Wednesday with some snow flurries coming, just a proper winter evening. And we're talking Jonesville High School basketball tonight. Uh, the man of the hour is Tom Dunn. Now, what I did, Tom, a couple of weeks ago, and we talked a little bit about this off the air. A couple of weeks ago, I, I threw it out to our listeners. Who do you want me to have in? Who would you like to be on the timeout show? And uh, Chuck George, do you know Chuck? I know Chuck. Chuck uh, wrote me uh, that day and said, why haven't you scheduled Tom Dunn this year? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't know if it was a question or an indictment. You know, he was angry about it that I hadn't had you in. So uh, I got on the phone with you, and I want to thank you for – because I know – listen, I coached for five years at the varsity level. I know how busy you are right now. Uh, to take a, a little bit of time to talk about your team is is really cool, and I appreciate you being here. And uh, Hannah Smith, one of your seniors, with you tonight as well. Talk a little bit about the Comet season. But before we get into it, I always like to reminisce about uh, your brother. Um, I work with Corey Dunn, and uh, his uh, dad, uh, Bill. Bill. Uh, coached at Jonesville for so many years, and you had a chance actually to coach with him, right? Yeah, I coached uh, under Bill. I was a seventh grade coach for, I believe, seven years. And then I took the girls' job, and I tagged along a little bit. So I was with Bill for a while. You know how long Bill was, was coaching at Jonesville? Well, he coached when I was a sophomore, and I graduated in 1988. So he was there a good 14, 15 years. Uh, did he get a chance to coach Corey? Yes, he did. They were probably decent in those days, weren't they? They were always good. I think Bill had one down season, if I can remember, of all the years he was there. So. I wondered about that because, <clears throat> you know, you see you see some of the great coaches. I think about Bill Belichick in the NFL. Every year there are all of these different good teams, you know. San Francisco was terrible two years ago, and now they're really good. Atlanta's always been bad, and now they're really good, and it kind of comes and goes. And then it's just... It's just like the Patriots just stay the same, that level of excellence year in and year out. You had that with Coach Morrison on the football side, uh, obviously your brother on the basketball side. Uh, Jonesville had some of those runs of consistency over the years, and I think that's what all of us kind of try to get to is to build up that program and have that consistency. Right. He had, he had a great system in place. You know, it started with the younger kids, and it just moved up through, through the program, and they're pretty solid every season. Did you and Bill ever actually play each other? No. Could you take him uh, if if you had to in a game or a one on one? I'd whip him and pig. You would just kill him, right? Oh, yeah. You'd take him right to the hole. Just now, have I'm you ever? Left-handed. That's the only reason. <laughs> have you ever faced Corey? We played pig. He's probably whipped me. Corey, and the other thing too is his wife uh, uh, Shay Phelps from Litchfield was a straight up stud when she played. Their children are going to be NBA basketball players, aren't they? Oh, they're going to be monsters. Are they, are they, I'm serious. Aren't they going to be amazing? Yeah, his, his oldest boy will probably be 6'7". <laughs> his youngest boy will probably be 6'6". Six, six. So uh, somebody's going to be real lucky. Then they got another daughter in the middle there. So somebody's going to be real lucky with those three. Tom Dunn's the head basketball coach at Jonesville. How, have you, how long have you been the head varsity girls coach at Jonesville? This is our 13th year. That's amazing. That's a that's a real that's a real uh, long run uh, for a local coach like that, and uh, sometimes with the the politics and the parent, parental pressures, that can become tough to make it that long. Um, how have you? What's been the secret of your long career at Jonesville? I wish I could answer that. Uh, maybe the gene pool. Uh, my brother had a lot of respect in town, and maybe I shirt tail off that. I've had real good luck with the parents. You just treat the kids right, you know, make it fair for them. Kids have fun. You get to stay there. You mentioned about the kids having fun from kind of a coaching philosophy. Where does winning and fun, how do those two rank? Well, if you win, they're going to have fun. Uh, you just try to make it fun for them in practice, and hopefully it spills over into the games because the more fun it is, the harder they're going to play, and hopefully the end result is some wins. Well, this year you're three and ten, and uh, I know that's tough. You're you're halfway through the season, and and it has been a struggle. And uh, part of it has been injuries. Uh, we talked a little bit about your daughter off air. Why don't you tell us about you know how healthy your team is right now? Well, we started off on a bad note. Liz Cousineau, a junior, junior forward, blew her ACL early in the and her meniscus, and probably every other muscle in her knee. Uh, in our pregame scrimmage against Camden preseason. 
and then we've had a couple bum ankles and then my daughter went down actually five weeks ago and she's she goes to the doctor tomorrow but she may be done with a meniscus but really that's that doesn't have a, a lot to do with why we're struggling uh, we're actually we're not really struggling we have not been blown out yet we've been in every game we do start three freshmen and you can only use that excuse for so long being young and those kids are growing up and they got real positive attitude and I have a lot of great older kids and they've taken them under their wing and I tell you what our league is by far I would say the toughest class C league in the state and you got Concord was in the final four last year and Athens was in the final game and they have almost everybody returning and you got Springport up there Homer up there and, and reading is much improved this year so that leaves the rest you got us Quincy and Union fighting at the bottom and there's just some good talent. It's got to be exciting for you because you know you're going to be here down the road. Uh, you've got uh, you've got all of those years under your belt. But to have three freshmen starting, uh, yeah, you're going to take your lumps maybe at the beginning of that. But uh, down the road, that's going to be pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, we also have a great junior high coming behind them. And we just made a decision this year. We're just going to bring those kids up. And I, I knew it was good. We, we always have trouble to score this year. So I figured, hey, if we're going to take our lumps, we may as well bring them up and throw them right into the mix. And actually, our leading scorer is a freshman, Kaylee Spencer, and our leading rebounder, Emily Dawson, she's a freshman. And then our other one is Hannah Ben, and she's second in steals behind Hannah here. But without those older kids accepting that, uh, we'd be in trouble, which I know a lot of other schools have that problem. We do not. We have super older kids here. Well, that begs the question, Hannah. Uh, Hannah, you're a senior on the ball club this year. Uh, how have the older players taken to the fact that you've got these three freshmen taking a lot of playing time? Um, if I'm an older veteran style player, you know, and I've, I've put in my time, I'm, I might not be crazy about these freshmen getting the playing time. How's that worked out from a chemistry standpoint on the team? You know, honestly, I don't think it's affected it that much. Um, we all just kind of bond like there are little siblings, and, you know, we pick on them sometimes, but we just – take them under our wing and we try to make them better do what we know and teach them how what we knew from little so do you, do you make them carry the gear and uh you know get you a refreshment and stuff like that i mean is, is that kind of thing happening we're not that mean they're mean, <laughs> they're mean to us because two of them are like six foot so they like play with me because i'm too short and it just they pick on me Hannah, what uh, role have you taken on this year as a senior on the club? What, talk about your game night uh, job. What do you have to do for the team to be successful? Um, well, I'm not one of the big scorers at all. You know, I just try to play my heart out, and I mean that's as much as. Are you running a uh, point? Are you a guard? Mm -hmm. I mean, what what's your position? I'm a point guard. Um, I <laughs> I like the defense. Can I butt in here? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's your show. Go ahead, If man. you haven't paid five bucks to watch this kid play, you need to. <laughs> um, this kid is all over the court. She's really not a point guard, but on our team this year, she has to play right. there. In the 13 years I've coached, she's right up there, the top two or three leaders we've had. She just, from practice to games, 100 miles an hour all the time, and everybody looks up to her, and that's why she's successful on the court. Do you see part of your role trying to set up your teammates to get easy shots too in, in addition to the defensive side of things? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just like kind of putting the, where the ball should go. I mean, I can't score, so. <laughs> now, have you guys had to adjust your sets and make it a little bit easier for these freshmen? Good point. Yes, we have. Normally, we'd have a lot more offense and a lot more defenses and to make it more complex. But when you got young kids, you try to keep it simple and do those things very mm -hmm. well. So maybe that's a little different this year, but I can see much improvement in them. So we probably don't have as much ammo as we had in the past, but they're catching on real quick. How do you find that, uh, that uh, balance you know, of complexity? You want to have uh, – I was talking to Rick Bailey about this. Rick's teams uh, – he's a football coach at Reading. His teams are tough to get ready for because he's got a million and two plays, right? He's got a million different formations, and he always says, I'm never going to have an empty bag at the end of the game. I'm always going to have one more play that I can pull out for a specific situation. You balance that, though, with the fact that the more you throw at the kids, man, maybe they don't know all the plays as well, or maybe they get a little bit complicated, and you don't want them thinking too much during the game, right? Right, especially the young kids. I've saved some stuff, and Hannah can vouch for this. We've put in some stuff here the last couple of weeks to – you know, to try to bring them along. And, and when you play another uh, same team the second time around, you kind of want to have something back. So we've just tried to keep it simple in the beginning. 
and hopefully second time around we might get one of these teams. Well, and what about that challenge of playing uh, in Athens or, or playing uh, a Springport and some of these tough teams, Hannah? I mean, it, from a mental standpoint, you guys have to stay tough and think, you know, history shows that they're going to be pretty good, but uh, tonight could be our night. I mean, how do you keep that focus mentally going into those tough games? I mean, like when we played Concord or Springport, Concord was definitely a big one. Um, I mean, on paper, it looked like they were going to blow us out of the water, but I think a lot of us have a lot of heart, and we just hustle for every play, and that's what keeps us in it. You don't look like a player who. You don't look like a player who is kind of hanging their head about being three and ten. Like you look like a player that sees that as a challenge going forward the rest of the way. Is that is that fair to say that that's the attitude your team has taken, uh, despite the tough start? Yeah, I mean three and ten isn't what we were looking for, but I mean most of these games we. Like Coach said, we didn't, we haven't gotten like blown out or anything. We've played our hearts out. There's nothing we can really um, be be down about. Mm -hmm. We've been in every game. You know, right. you, you might be up, you're down by ten in the fourth quarter, and you have to gamble and press, and so the game ends up to be twenty. But we've right. been, we've been there. We've been in every game, so that's the positive thing going forward. What do you talk? I mean, how do you talk to a kid who works hard over the summer? We're dealing with this at the college right now. Their, their senior point guard, Leah Jones, blew her knee out. Uh, she tore her ACL. She's done. Halfway through her senior season. Now, Leah spent countless hours, not just playing basketball, but weight training, uh, strengthening her legs so that that wouldn't happen. You know, all of that time that you put in in the off season, and then you get that diagnosis, you're done. I mean, how do you, when you deal with your players, coach, uh, what do you tell them? What do you say to them to help them through that tough time? Well, that's a good good point. Our uh, center freshman, uh, Emily Dawson, blew her ACL the second eighth grade game last year. Mm -hmm. So we just tried to pump her up to get her ready for this season in the off season. You know, she had to ride the bike and lift weights and rehab and rehab. So we just tried to keep it positive so they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. The same that we're doing with our junior, Liz Cousineau, just trying to get her ready for next season. I think that would be easier for poor Leah over there if she had any more time. But, you know, Co Coach Charney was tearing up Saturday when we were doing the interview because she's done. I mean, th this is it. There's no medical red shirt. She's never going to be able to play college basketball again. And I think, especially when you play at that level with the level of commitment that goes into it, it becomes a huge part of your life. And then one day you're playing against Tiffin, and the next day it's over forever. It's tough. I mean, you, everybody has to deal with difficulty in life. But uh, that's got to be tough to deal with. And what's going on with these ACLs? Uh, it just seems like an epidemic, Coach. Uh, more, it's, it's a girl thing. Um, I think what we need to do as coaches, all the coaches around, we need to strengthen the kids better. You know, we need to be taught what to do and do more exercises so this doesn't happen as frequent. I mean, it's still going to happen, but if we can cut down the number, I think we're headed in the right direction. You're, you're echoing exactly what Coach Charney said because she's done a lot of statistical studies on – she's starting to do more of it because a lot of her players have had a lot of knee issues and wondering about the different anatomy of a, a man and a woman. And, it, you know, in Leah's case, it was a weight transfer. She just changed direction and blew her knee out. She didn't run into anybody. There was no like huge thing where she twisted it or anything like that. She just changed direction and it blew. It's just the, the, that perfect moment, if you will, can change it all. And you, you as a coach, Especially, especially you guys who take it so seriously, you know what can be done, and that's got to be a question for a doctor or a trainer. I mean, is there anything you can do ahead of time to help prevent it? I think the best thing we can do, from from my understanding, is is try to train the muscles better with the kids, and which means jumping rope and other exercises that trainers could tell us what to do. And we need to do that in the off season and during the season to try to cut down on those injuries. All right, Hannah, let's get to the positives here. Uh, three wins. Now, nobody can take those away from you, and I bet each of them is really sweet. <laughs> what was the most fun game you played this year uh, that you were really proud of the outcome? I would have to say the academy game just because I used to go there. Right. <laughs> Uh, so you guys, you, did you beat Hillsdale Academy? We did. And they've been really good this year. So that's a nice one win on your mantle right there, isn't it? They're very, very, very solid for Class D. They're, they're got a nice team. And, you know, that's okay. I think you don't have to feel bad about feeling good about that game, Hannah. Uh, going forward, obviously seven more games uh, before the, the tournament starts. Um, 
Talk about your schedule the rest of the way and kind of what your goals are going forward. Okay, here's the good news. Tomorrow we play Quincy. Quincy has one more league win than, than we do. They have two wins on the season, so that should be a good game. Next week we play Union City. They have two wins on the season, and they beat us over there. So Hannah and the girls, we looking for a little revenge there. Mm-hmm. And then we have a very tough stretch of Homer, Athens, and Concord on the road. You know, we'll give it our best shot and see what happens. And then we finish the year with Springport, Reading, and Quincy again. And, you know, those are more manageable games. You just have to come to play. And hopefully, you know, our younger kids will be better by then. And we'll see what happens. Um, Have your freshmen taken this uh, well as far as the pressure that goes into playing from, you know, the jump from eighth grade to varsity is a big jump. How have they adjusted to that jump so far this year? I think the speed of the game caught them early, but I think they're catching up. Um, they don't feel overwhelmed by it or anything. They like might that. have been early, but right. I think now they've settled in and they fit in and they, they deserve to be there. So they belong. Where's your district? Our district is at Jonesville. Okay. We, uh, we drew a bye to the Hudson Hillsdale game. So we could possibly face Hillsdale a third time, and they've, they beat us twice. So I know that's <laughs> on the girls' minds, being five miles apart. And to have the district at home has got to be an advantage. Yes, anytime you can play on your home floor. Because this year I think we only had eight out of 20 games at home. So any more home games, we welcome those. Absolutely. Uh, Tom Dunn is the longtime head coach of the Jonesville uh, girls basketball team. Hannah Smith is one of the seniors. Uh, This is a team that you want to keep an eye on. Not just the end of this year, uh, but going forward with all of these young players, they will be a force to reckon with down the road. And, uh, Tom, I look forward to talking to you. Uh, in the next couple of years as that continues to to happen. Appreciate the time. Uh, I know you guys are super busy. We wish you the best the rest of the way. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Tom and Hannah, we really appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the way. Your next game again, let me write this down. When's your next game? Tomorrow night at Quincy. Tomorrow at Quincy. And that's what, around 7 o'clock? 7.30. Go get them, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, We'll have the roundtable coming up next on the Timeout Show.